Shaq's house. Shaq's house. Shaq's house. Shaq's house. Shaq's house. Shaq's house. Hey, what's going on Shaq Housers? How you doing? It's your boy, the one and only Shaq House here. That's right. First off, awesome con this past weekend. That was awesome. No pun intended. Yeah, I went there originally just for one purpose. To talk to cosplay chicks. That's right. Talk to cosplay girls. But what happens? Collector's Impulse. I bought a whole bunch of books there that I didn't intend to buy until months from now. But I'm glad I did because now I can satiate my thirst for comics. Once again, that is. <laughs> anyway, today, what are we going to be talking about? We're going to be talking about that Marvel 90s X-Men spinoff team, Generation X. That's right, the Mutant Gen Xers. But who? We're going to be talking about one of the original characters created for that book. The British mutant known as Chamber. Yeah, he never got the potential, reached the potential that he should have. But we're going to be looking at him. We're going to be giving, we're, you're going to get my thoughts on him. We're going to do a run on his powers and everything that could have been. So, check it out. <laughs> Chamber. Chamber possesses the mutant power of psionic biokinesis. He produces a unique form of psionic energy that has a highly destabilizing effect on physical matter. His bioblasts erupt from his chest, hitting their target with a tremendous amount of energy as molecules were hyperstimulated in his path and the biokinetic force could cause a concussive explosion that devastates solid matter or tears it apart on a molecular level. Though his energies resemble fire, they are decidedly non-combustible in nature. He can project his bioblasts in a straight line as multiple bolts which seek out and strike individual targets, a laser-like pencil beam, or as a shockwave of energy expanding out from his body. The effect that his power's first manifestation had on his own body was considerable, destroying his chest along with the lower half of his face. This resulted in a gaping maw of raging energy in his chest, extending down from the bridge of his nose to his navel. His physiology had to adjust dramatically to this, as he basically became a being of living energy holding on to an organic body out of habit. Chamber does not require and is not capable of eating, drinking, or breathing. He subsides totally on his own energies. Unable to speak normally anymore, Chamber's psionic energy gives him telepathy, which allows him to communicate through thought projection. He can broadcast on all channels so that everyone around him can hear his telepathic voice or isolate the effect so that only specific individuals can hear him speak. Jonathan can also receive and transmit thoughts to a limited degree, acting as a hub for psychic communication between himself and others. He's also somewhat sensitive to nearby thought patterns allowing him to detect the presence of other people, as well as sense and transmit certain psychic intuitions. For example, he can detect when someone is being truthful or sincere, impress his own good nature onto a person to prevent them from being scared of him, or even lock on and broadcast Spider-Man's spider sense temporarily so that everyone in range can feel the same danger emanations that Spider-Man can feel. Chamber supposedly has the potential for developing flight and more ranged telepathic and even telekinetic abilities, but is yet to do so. While working as an undercover operative with the Weapon X program, the scientists within said program, they reconstructed Chamber's face, restoring his ability to speak, to breathe, and to eat. He still maintained his power to communicate telepathically, and the hole in his chest was cybernetically harnessed to focus his bioenergy safely through. When M-Day reverted him to a human, however, the reversion disrupted the presence of his cybernetic chest piece, causing his face and chest to violently explode open. Kept alive artificially for weeks in this disfigured state, Jono was kidnapped by his relatives in the clan Akaba, who transfused a supply of Apocalypse's blood into his body, which interacted with his genetic code to mutate him into a newer state. Chamber's physical structure was completely restored, including his chest and mouth. However, he developed ash gray skin, radiant red eyes, lining around his mouth similar to Apocalypse's, and a giant Clan Akaba hieroglyphic tattoo on his chest. But what sort of new mutant abilities he gained from this transformation remains unclear. After joining Night Thrasher's new new warriors as Decibel, 
Jono outfitted himself with a neck brace that manipulated the sound waves of his own voice, giving him sonic telekinetic powers very similar to Songbird of the Thunderbolts. As Decibel, Jono can generate ear-splitting ultrasonic frequencies, deafening his opponents, causing them to experience a loss of balance, equilibrium, or consciousness, or affecting solid matter such as shattering glass or crumbling masonry with a sustained sonic barrage. Manipulating sound waves and then directing them beneath him causes Jono to fly. He could also create solid sound projections, blasting objects with pure concussive force or generating various kinds of force fields. He could use these fields to shield himself and others from harm or use them to contain explosions or even cage his opponents. He cybernetically controls these force fields and can move them against the pull of gravity as well, allowing him to wrap people or objects inside a force field and move them around under his command, pulling civilians out of a combat arena or transporting his teammates from place to place. Jono can also create more advanced constructs, such as various geometric shapes or animated figures, such as a giant version of himself or a group of flying pixies to distract his opponents. And like all members of this iteration of the New Warriors, Decibel had a utility belt with cartridges containing pin particles for reducing opponents down to size or impact webbing for quickly wrapping up and restraining felons. His suit contained a ghost mode that rendered him intangible and utterly unaffected by physical assaults. Following Legion's reality warp with the Age of X, Jono was altered by his reality-altering powers, which reverted him back to his traditional chamber form. Some fun facts. Chamber was created by writer Scott Lobdell and artist Chris Pachalo. You see, back in the 90s, Marvel wanted to reintroduce the Xavier School back into the X-Men books. But they decided to have the setting at Emma Frost School, the Massachusetts Academy in Western Massachusetts, as opposed to the Xavier Institute in upstate New York. With a handful of original, new adolescent mutant characters, they, along with their book, were named Generation X, a play on X-Men and a pure 90s reflection of the cynicism and disaffection of the demographic of the same name. Of all the team members, Chamber embodies his generation's characteristics the most, though he wasn't always like that. He's an Englishman, raised in London, and he was also heavy into the English punk and goth scene, and from his word bubbles, his telepathic word bubbles anyway, he's got a bit of a Cockney accent. Through his great-grandfather, Jack Starsmore, he's a member of the clan Akaba and therefore has ancestral lineage to En Sabanur, he who is the Apocalypse, though Chamber himself, he wants nothing to do with that part of his family. He's a skilled guitarist, and during his late teens, he had a girlfriend named Gail Edgerton. At a music venue when he had Gail alone, he was actually preparing to have sex with her right when his mutant power manifested itself, of all times. Once his power manifested itself, it maimed his body and left Gale gravely injured and paralyzed in a wheelchair. So as a result, Jonathan, or Jono, he became cynical, sullen, and kept mostly to himself, even after he joined Generation X. But during his time in Generation X, he got along best with his teammates Skin, Sink, and had an on and off relationship with Paige Guthrie, AKA Husk. One of his crowning moments during Generation X was single-handedly beating Omega Red himself. Yeah, that's right, Omega Red. And at, the end of, and at the end of Generation X's run, he was invited by Xavier himself to join the X-Men. He was an X-Man, briefly, but he didn't really fit in. He was sent undercover into the revitalized Weapon X program after rumors arose of its mutant death camp called Neverland. The Weapon X scientists, they fixed his face, and genetically re-engineered portions of his body that he had lost to his powers, leaving only a bionic implant in the center of his chest that would focus his power blast as necessary. So now he could eat, breathe, talk, and even smile. Then M-Day happened. Chamber was reverted back to a human, but with no bioblast, only a hole and a missing lower half of his face, and he was left hospitalized. He was restored to health by his family in the clan Akaba using Apocalypse's blood, giving him an unspecified potential for a new mutant power, but that was never made clear. When he joined a newer iteration of the New Warriors as Decibel, he was eventually restored to his original chamber appearance, at which point he joined the Jean Grey School for Higher Learning, where he taught a course on coping with physical changes. 
During his time with the Jean Grey School for Higher Learning, he died fighting the evil mutant killing marauders, trying to get revenge on them after they killed some of the Morlocks who were under his care. And the chamber was among one of the many mutants who was resurrected on Krakoa. He was a cool looking character for me. Yeah, he sported a leather jacket, but was insecure about his appearance due to the looks he got from other people, even his own teammates. And the writers, they had to give the guy telepathy as an excuse for him to communicate. And he could have developed it further, but he chose not to. Also, since he is pure psionic energy, he could potentially be Omega level. However, the UK already had one mutant who was raw psionic energy, and he nearly destroyed Scotland, if not the world, aka Proteus. One of the things they never did during the Generation X run was show Chambers' potential to be a leader, a field leader at least, and give him some much needed interaction with someone like Emma Frost. I mean, Emma, she's a Boston chick who pretends to be British, and most of her banter during the Generation X's run were with Sean Cassidy, the Irish headmaster of her school. Yeah, Emma pretends to be British, but if she went up against a real Brit like Chamber, oh, Jonathan Starsmore, he would dog walk that bitch. <laughs> okay, Shaq Housers, that's what I got for you this week. Next week, we're going to have a battle of mutants who can move things with their minds. Guess what I'm going to be talking about in the comments? You have a good weekend, and I will see you next week. Later! Mansion, apartment, shack, house. Yes! <laughs>